and welcome to what are you saying hashtag ways where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all and i am chinelo anene and tonight in this today we're supposed to be four well we're three well we will still be four <laughs> hi ladies hi shay hi mj hi, how are you hello. doing hi, MJ. how was your day are you excited about the long holiday or the long yeah. weekend yeah, i'm not excited i have Why? things to do so and you have I'm things to do. you're not going to break. work well, I'm not going to work, uh -huh. but I'm yeah. still yeah, even if you're waking up home, 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 at least you're going up, yeah. but then you know you're not waking up with that consciousness. Oh, I have to be at work. Yeah, yeah. well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. For people who still have to work during this holiday, I mean, we feel your pain. We love you. We wish you love and <laughs> oh, light. You. You'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, Angie, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How's the week been? Oh uh, well, it's it's been a good week. Mm. Yeah, we've gotten some nice, you know, nice deals coming. So oh, it's been a good. Week. So that's more money. So yeah, so <laughs> I love the sound of that. <laughs> I love the sound of that. Interesting that tonight, tonight we're talking about building a carapath versus. I'm sure that mm -hmm, we have a whole lot to, <laughs> to uncover with that, right? Anyway, here's what we found as today's quote. You can't be successful in business without taking risks. It's really that simple. You cannot be successful in business without taking risks. It's, it's, it's really that simple. And this is by Adena Friedman. So over the internet, we came across a tweet that reads, 9 to 5 with a high salary is better than owning your own business. Being a business owner just means now you have 100 or 1,000 bosses because now you'll be working to stay successful to all these people. Now, the big question is this. Is earning a high salary better than owning a business in Nigeria? It's our ladies' night out. And tonight, Sherry, Mary, NJ, and I are here to discuss the topic pursuing a lucrative career versus entrepreneurial ventures. And when we open our phone lines, we'll love to hear what you have to say. But well, first, let's take a break to see what we found in the news. You are still watching Ways. While women have shown to have as much musical talent as men, the musical world is one of the many arenas where women have often been held back or undercut. The purpose for the day encourages the promotion and showing appreciation for the women who have made an impact on the music world, despite what is often a glass ceiling that holds them back. The world can be a harsh place for women, but International Women in Music Day is here to honor the talented women who have so much to offer and who often have to fight harder to get noticed mm. i'm sure if you ask the ladies on this table who their favorite musicians are i'm sure that you would first mention like two women am i wrong no you're not okay <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so yes yeah, international um Women, women in music, music day. day. I, I think the month of March is all about women. It's yeah, women celebrating women. Through, yeah? Absolutely. Mm. The entire month. I know. We deserve it. <laughs> we actually deserve it. Because mm -hmm. our colleagues, yes. that's what we deserve. You know? <laughs> Sorry to the men out there. Don't worry. <laughs> I know there's Remember international men there. Exactly. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. We'll celebrate but the, the truth is comes. that the men actually get a lot more recognition than the mm. women. Do I remember um, one of the... the um, episodes we had in I think December or mm -hmm. November with the, the lady who had just come into Nigeria I don't remember what her name is for the life of me now and she was talking about how promoting women in music is a lot mm -hmm. harder than promoting men, men because women are objectified you yeah. know they look at them as oh a sexual object and they expect you to dress a certain type of mm -hmm. way look a certain type of way because you are in that industry and all of that so I mean it's a good thing that we're celebrating I, the likes of Angeliki Kijo, the likes of T.Y. Bello yeah. like, these are women who have actually made the name for themselves in different genres of music in the world today. So yeah, kudos. Kudos, well done. women. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'll start with, let me see, Shay, I'll start with you. What do you find for us in the news tonight? Okay, so rain washes away on Isha Road one week after inauguration. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> An alarm has been raised by residents of Onisha, the commercial nerve center of Anambra State, over the washing away of one week old road by a 20 minute rain on Monday. A 20 minute rain, just for emphasis. <laughs> the rainfall lasted about 20 minutes, reportedly. The rainfall lasting about 20 minutes reportedly washed away newly laid asphalt at Ochanja Market in Onisha, South Local Government Area. The road lasted the road lasted barely one week before it was washed away by the rain torrents. 
there are various reasons why this would have happened. Mm. Budget constraints, mm -hmm. poor planning, corruption, and incompetence. Because tell me why, I know it's not a major road, right? But even though 20 minutes rain, that means it was shabbily done. Definitely. And because it's not a major road, so I mean, they didn't put too much Attention. effort into that. Mm -hmm. But I really want to appeal to the Anambra government to do something about it. I mean, these are basic amenities that the government should provide to the people. So yes, I mean, reading the news, it made me like roll my eyes, like 20 minutes rain <laughs> and the road went bad. So yeah, you it's know, not exciting it, to read, but yeah, yeah that's uh, what it definitely. is. Definitely. <laughs> in, in this case, in fact, I need to even cover my face in shame because this is my state. I think this is hey, uh, No, 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 no. <laughs> that's <laughs> one, one. You're supposed to uh, take this story, no, please. No, no, no. I had it over to you. <laughs> look at that. Just look at no, that. No, just no, look no, at no. that. And, oh, wow. I'm not with well, you. Well, it's okay. I'm not going to deny my state. <laughs> my state, you know. And this is the thing about us. We're so quick to call the government. But remember that this contract was awarded to an individual or a, an organization, a construction company, right? So how about we blame them first before we blame? Because I saw, I saw the story. And everyone on the internet kept shouting, Saludo, Saludo. And I'm like, hey. But they him. should not give the contracts to just anybody. So that's the thing, right? It, it might be, it might have, the contract might have been awarded to someone who was trusted, and then this is what came out of it. And eventually. probably he gave it to somebody else. Do you because understand? It's not a major yeah. Work. yeah. There's always, they always try to cut, they will give a budget for mm -hmm. the year. Exactly. For the completion of the entire yeah. project. But what they do after they've gotten the finance yeah. is totally different. They might end up giving it to someone else, another contractor. Mm -hmm. And then that's why this thing keeps going bad yeah. this quickly because obviously they used stop, uh, substandard uh, materials, materials for this absolutely. project. Absolutely. Because for it to get bad so quickly. Mm -hmm. There was a video, so yeah, quick. 20 minutes and the road was bad. Just yeah, too that's quick. quite pathetic. Anyway, my story tonight is um, the U.S. federal agents raid Didi's homes. So, um, homes belonging to Sean Daddy Combs were raided by the federal agents on Monday um, with the U.S. hip-hop mogul in the center of a sex trafficking claims and sex assault lawsuits. Armed agents from the Department of Homeland Security entered luxury uh, properties on both the east and west coast of the United States with video footage showing helicopters circling overhead and a huge uh, law enforcement presence on the ground. Earlier today, Homeland Security, um, HSI, um, New York executed law enforcement um, actions as a part of an ongoing interrogation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles and HSI Miami and our local law enforcement partners. So, this has been the story trending, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been trending you know, on now. the international, um, you know, Fonts. font for days and weeks, in short. Uh, I think this story started, uh, became a thing when after his last girlfriend, Cassidy, Cassidy, um, Cassie, sorry, Cassie um, sued him um, and the lawsuit was settled within 24 hours. I think that's, at that point, it raised a lot of eyebrows. <laughs> and everyone started wondering, you know, Is yeah, there, there were one? comments here and mm -hmm. there. Why would you, you know, settle out of court, you know, within 24 hours? Okay. That's too quick. That's mm, like yeah. the, one of the, I think that's the shortest I've heard. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Same sure other, there, there have been other shows, but in the history of celebrity life, mm -hmm. so, um, I think it's the shortest I've heard. And it's, you know, it's raised a lot of eyebrows. And then soon after, weeks later, um, two other um, ladies came, you know, came out and sexual also, assault. you know, sued him on sexual assault and, you know, sex trafficking. Yeah. And, you know, for it to get to the point where, you know, the FBI saw the footage yeah. of the raid and the amount of police presence or military presence, because they had armored tanks, they had, you know, vests, they had... So, to me, it was as if they were going to go and raid, um, they were going to <laughs> Mex in Mexico to oh, go and raid Pablo Escobar, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. It was quite, you know, I literally sat down and watched the whole footage, and now started going back to see some of the previous, you know, um, accusations that had been brought be um on someone like this, someone with this kind of high, mm -hmm. you know, 
level in the music industry. He's a mm. the, he's a mogul. He's been there for years. He's yes, been there since true. the days of um, uh, like, Big Daddy. He's Tupac. He's been in the industry for. He's a been long in the time. industry he's for. He's even had like several transitions yeah. from. Yeah. Um, P D D to yeah, D D to yeah, the Lord Bob Daddy. <laughs> you know the funny part about this thing. Um, so I started doing some, you know, just doing some research, just trying to find out the background story behind it, and then it opened my eyes to a whole lot of things. Mm. Apparently, the law, the the lawsuit and sexual uh, uh, charges, mm. you know, the whole thing is going to apparently is going to expose a whole lot of things. It's going to expose a whole lot of high profile people in the entertainment and music and movie industry yeah so the entertainment industry and even i i see that it goes beyond the entertainment industry but there has been a lot of news and this thing has been going on for years a lot of people have been coming out for years you know to say different things about pdd about how he handles his business about his personal life about his sexual orientation and all that and his preferences and you know, there have been so many stories. A lot of people have been called, you know, the likes of Justin Bieber, yeah, Usher, Justin Bieber. you know, uh, Jermaine Dupri yeah. from years ago. You know, even his managers, his business partners, all of them and a wide range of people. Jay-Z, you know, the, the Beyonce, a lot of people have been called. And the kind of caliber of people that would be called in this kind of lawsuit as witnesses or as whatever is, is going to uncover a lot. And... Already, I hear that because of what is currently happening, um, he is going to have to release a few of this information because he mm -hmm. wouldn't want to, in order for him to not to get into trouble, he would have to release some, some information or help the FBI with some ongoing inves investigation before, you know, something like a backdoor deal or something like that. So it's, it's crazy what is happening. Yeah. <sighs> I you mean, know, it's just like the day that we heard about, you know, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. and then, mm -hmm. you know, That's called Bill Cosby. Yeah. To, be, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm surprised, honestly, because <sighs> we, for a very long time, we're not hearing these stories. They just let to unfold mm -hmm. about maybe a few, five years, six years, seven years back, right? Because imagine someone coming all the way from 2003, coming out in 2023 to say that she was gang raped by... PDD and some more, two other people, as a matter of fact. I mean, it just goes to show that it's been happening for a very long time, but yes. no one was saying anything. Same thing with R. Kelly as well, but no one was saying anything. Yeah, as a matter of fact, me. even a guy came out, I think that was last month, yeah. saying that um, Rob, that, there were his, two other his, people. His producer yeah. is the one filing a, a, a current lawsuit, apart from these ladies who, mm -hmm. just, came who out. just came out. So yeah. the one that is making the rounds, because he's now coming out and saying that he has video, mm. pictures, Evidence. audio. And I came across one of the audios, and it wasn't a fantastic listening, you know. <laughs> I think for me, I'm just glad that people are coming out. They have yeah, the and they're speaking. To show their faces. I think and, it's just know. technology that is bringing yes. all this mm -hmm. out because now people can, you know, then you take pictures, you know, all those, you know, one snap pictures and everything, right, and you yeah. just keep it aside. But now you have phones that do recordings, you have all right. sorts. So even if someone has been there or with him or within the industry with him for years, because now there is now social media and a way to either monetize mm. or bring this to light, a lot of people are taking advantage of that mm. because he hasn't changed. If he has changed, then that's different. You know, unlike R. Kelly, there were not enough. It was just hearsay, hearsay. and people that were actually there, physical mm -hmm. evidence. Yeah. But this, there's a lot of audio, there's a lot of video, and I hear that with mm. the raid, they were able to capture... They gathered a whole lot of evidence because wow. I hear that PDD uh, records everything in his house. What? <sighs> what? TMI. I can't <laughs> wait to see what's going to come out. Really, I can't <laughs> wait. Okay, so um, for me, coming back to what's happening in our immediate environment, I must say, um, the brakes of a truck failed and destroyed three vehicles on mm. the Udre Legba Bridge today. And I cannot even begin to imagine the amount of traffic that this could have caused. I mean, I saw th these pictures and I'm just like, what? the red car is a an oh, total God. write off. There's nothing that can, I don't think there's anything that can be done to redeem it because front and back gone. So they, they gone. literally pushed them. Away. Yeah, so, and then it affected three, or it was, it was a multiple accident. So the coaster, the gold vehicle, and then this red one. Wow. So who's going to fix what? We don't even know at this point. I just <laughs> hope no <laughs> lives were lost. I don't think so. I don't think any, any, don't think any, any lives were lost. Like no. every time. There's yeah, always because, one story or the other about you know, trucks falling or trucks hitting somebody. 
and something really, needs to be done. Yes, because I'm really now that the third million, because I'm sure this happened because the third million bridge, bridge mm. rather, um, was locked, and the only way to get to the island is coming through the Kodu Road through the Odre Legba Bridge. Yes. So that means there's a whole lot of traffic. And this, mm. I always say, I don't know why these tankers or these trucks function during the day. Yeah. I can never understand it. I anytime I see them, yeah. Them. Anytime I see them during the day, I'm like, what are these people doing on the road at this time of the day? At least wait till what, maybe 11, yes, 12, 1, and move. then you can move mm -hmm. at that time. At least the roads are free. Then a lot of people, if you're going to have an accident, you and your tank are exactly. the ones that leave other innocent people. And another thing out is, of it. sorry to interrupt, another yeah. thing is, these trucks shouldn't climb the bridge. Sure. There should be a barrier. I remember mm -hmm. there was one time, because I usually I frequent that road a lot, they, they created a barrier. Mm -hmm. It was on a Sunday. Like I went to church, I yeah. came back, I didn't see it again. They removed it. They so. removed it. No, they don't <laughs> have to remove it. Someone would knock it over. Oh, I'm like, why? Because someone is not expecting it to be there. Where, where uh, society? And after that we... they removed it, nobody came back to do anything. <laughs> That's it. End of story. Ah, uh, oh well. I mean, we've spoken about all of these things happening around the world, but then we still have a whole lot to discuss tonight. Considering, or rather, talking about. Pursuing a lucrative career path versus an entrepreneurial venture. Let's take a break and then when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. You're, you're not just taught the normal education curriculum. Leadership is part of it. It's not just about saying... Uh, they don't empower us enough. Are you ready to take what to take what it means to be a leader? Okay. We have spaces, we have associations, we have organizations, we have companies. How about we start seeing youth as board of directors? It's not a crime to say 22, a 23, a 25 year old as a board of director. For you to even say you want to come up to that space of leadership, right? How ready are you? What are the processes you have put in place? What foundation have you laid upon yourself? Are you empathy enough? Are you one that listens and not, or you're just one that maybe you're here and you're rapidly just getting into it, you're bumping, hey, we know go, it's not about we know go green or we know go green. No, at times you need to draw back. You need to sit back and rethink, okay, this thing that is happening, why is it happening like that? What better solutions can I prefer to do it? It starts little, little by there. This topic actually cannot be overemphasized. You know, I actually feel like it's not just a um, youth lack of interest. I understand that somehow most of us are actually, we've actually just, you know what, let's just drop this. We can't do this thing anymore. Yeah. I mean, the 2020 should even give us a lesson. Yeah. What happened I'm last year? Us. What happened last, last year? year? Yeah. Bro, the OLP 24 and all of those things. And <laughs> see, where, yeah, see where it got us. You know, it's, it's discouraging. But at the same time, we have to, we don't have to be discouraged. Yeah. You know, if you're looking, if you're working towards something, if you if you know that you want to actually achieve a particular goal, regardless of the storms, regardless of the rainfalls, you have to make sure that you're there. You know, so regardless of what happens, no, see, we will not start seeing the shaking. We'll continue working, right? Yeah. We'll leave the hope and lack of interest one place, and we'll just make sure that okay, this is our goal to make Nigeria better, yeah. and we'll always work towards it. that really we could do is try to show them with our actions, mm -hmm. which I think we're already doing. Like, there's youth rallies, yeah, there's that, things that's like That's what that. I spoke about, yeah. yeah. You know, I think we're, I feel like we're already doing as much as we can. The people at the top need to care enough about nurturing the next generation to push them through into these positions for it to, for it to go anywhere. Taking care of the people who have no one to take care of them should be my number one responsibility. 
making sure that they have access to food, water, school, yeah. good jobs, yeah. welfare, you know, whatever they need to build them up. Because by building them up, the next, their next generation have a good, at least, foundation to start on. And that way, at least, the level of poverty in this country will reduce. As a government, even if things are getting expensive, we should still be able to take care of our people, the people who can't take care of themselves. running a business and earning a high salary is a very personal decision that is influenced by personal circumstances, values and goals. A large income could bring stability and a healthy work-life balance, but being a business on owner offers independence. The ability to build offers independence, the ability to build money and the possibility to make a lasting impact. Regardless of the path selected, attaining long-term success and fulfillment in one's career journey requires thoughtful deliberation and smart planning. So tonight, we're comparing lucrative careers versus entrepreneurial ventures. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 The number again to SMS or send a WhatsApp message to is 081 Okay. It's about to go down. Ta -na -na. We have four <laughs> ladies right here. And I think that um, to start with, well, we, have, we would have a very interesting perspective because I, I know that at least everybody in Stable has a nine to five, right? Yeah. By the way, Mary, welcome. We missed you at the beginning of the show, but we're glad that you made it <laughs> and we're happy that you are here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Thank you. so I think I would actually start with Mary. Let me hear what your perspective is. So would you, let me ask this question first. I think that's, that's what I'll do first. So would you rather run a lucrative career or would you run a business? In every honesty, I would say a lucrative career. Um, I think growing up, that's always the part I saw myself, like rising up as a career woman, you know, and it's, Another part of me as well is saying that because maybe fear of the unknown for entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh. Entrepreneurship throws you into the ocean without any, you know, life jackets. Life jackets. Yeah, mm. you know, so it's it's very dicey. If you can, depending on what you want to do, what I would really love to do, like, with my life I'm realizing now is mm. not in the nine to five. Mm. So, you know, is deciding, okay, but the nine to five is going to give you a base, it's going to cushion some things. Yeah. Do you understand? Like so mm. while you're at it, it's nice to do it and do it well, mm. you know, gradually before you transition into entrepreneurship. Some people are very bold, they can start out at first and you know, just hit it off if it works for them. For me, I would say, even the, the background that, the training that 9 to 5 gives you, yeah. you will need it in entrepreneurship. So, business. yeah. But, but then, let me say, so you're afraid of risk, right? I mean, <laughs> but from our yeah. thoughts today, it was said that it's you can't be blow. successful in business yeah. without risk. You right. definitely have to take a risk. So, even in career, there's risk. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So, if I'm saying, I tell you, yeah. 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 you yeah. understand, yeah. there's a fear mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but I will still say, Okay, I'll, sound like I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. <laughs> Next question, Shay. What would you rather do? Okay, for me, I love the convenience that comes with nine to five. Um, stability, you know that at the end of the month, something oh, yes. is going to enter my account, <laughs> no matter the situation, except you, the person, no, you will not get laid off. Well, except the person gets laid off. Yeah. I also love that there are so many benefits. I mean, mm -hmm. there's HMO, you can access healthcare without taking money out of your pocket there's leave allowance for organizations that have structure though. oh well for yeah we're talking Very about uh, lucrative, lucrative so yeah. it's not any yeah. house yeah. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you for correcting yes so it's not yeah. any house yeah. so i love the end of year bonus mm, the rice the bag of rice ones. chicken <laughs> the oil all of that i love it however 
it can be limiting financially. Whatever you accept, you are in, in an industry where they promote you regularly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't go, for instance, now, as a nine-to-five um, person, you cannot go past your boss's grade. So even if you are doing fantastically well, you cannot go above, except you get promoted or somebody um, pushes you or something. Mm -hmm. It's harder. But, you know, when you are... When you own your own business, there's that freedom, there's autonomy, there is freedom to do anything you want, you can relax, you can rest. But of course, I'm not saying it does not come with stress, risk, and a whole lot of things. But personally, I think I would I like the, um, the convenience that comes with 9 to 5. But of course, I mean, also have a side hustle by the side, just Absolutely. in case, Absolutely. just have something I, extra. I agree. Yes, I agree. <laughs> to me, Shay has said everything. <laughs> There's a, there's a difference. Like I think all of us work a nine to five. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure we all have like side. Everyone in order to survive in Nigeria, you kind of need a side hustle, mm -hmm. unless you're like a you've gotten to the kid. point, or, <laughs> unless you're a trust fund kid, or you you've gotten to the point of a senior exec. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Do you do you what? Do you actually have to have a side hustle? You don't. Oh. So I, I mean, I think the thing. That's is, why I said unless you are you're working a fantastic job that pays really well in order to that. even at that. Or you have investments I mean, I, that are giving you passive. Yeah, or you have investments or things like that. And so, so you could you could do investments, but then I don't think everybody. Investment is also a side hustle. Yeah, though. it is. So I don't mean like a side business. Not everyone owns a side business, but okay. some people own side businesses like they, they trade on products. Some people trade on different services. They have a service delivery company. Some people, some people they trade online. Some uh -huh. people just earn yeah. commissions uh -huh. from doing okay. deals and mm -hmm. okay. you know, procurement okay. and all that. Okay, so, that, yeah. that makes, that makes you know, sense. But for an entrepreneur, I feel like the difference is to add to what Shay said, there's a lot more growth. And why is that? Because you're working different positions at the same time. You're the CEO, you're the owner of the business. So you're mm -hmm. the one to push the, look for the opportunities. You're the one to market your, your business to other people. You're the one to employ the people that would, or employ the people that would help market mm -hmm. your business to other people or to your potential clients. You're the one that would ensure the growth of your business. So nobody's going to do it for you. Yeah. Even when you have employees, now your employees depend on the entrepreneur. So when it even comes to income, if you look at it, no matter how much the highest manager or the highest executive in any organization is, the CEO is, or the owner of the company is always any more, chairman, sure. CEO, whatever you may call him, but the guy at the top who is the brains behind the, uh, the idea or the business is always any more. Mm -hmm. So there's always more income potential for an entrepreneur yeah. because if you're a sole proprietorship in terms of you run your own business yes. by yourself, mm -hmm and you're not a li limited liability where you can employ people and all that. So you, you, all your income is coming to you. Is when you, you know, decide to employ other people, irrespective of that, the major income still comes to you, and yeah. you decide how that income trickles down al along the ranks. So there's always more, and then there's more risk mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. So that opens you up to a lot more learning. So, yeah, I think... I, I don't know where to be now. <laughs> okay, so I mean, what I'm hearing on this table is financial security and risk. That's what we're, we're literally talking about. So yeah. We're delving more into the trade-offs between the stability of getting a steady paycheck yeah. as opposed to, you know, that financial uncertainty of running your own business at the end of the month, right? Okay, no one has said anything about the lifestyle consequences, the work-life balance. Work-life balance. Running your own business, you know, I don't have to be awake at... Yes, so well, that's it. No one is saying But there's a bad side to that, in my I, opinion. I get you, NJ. I understand <coughs> you. I, I understand you 100%, right? But at the same time, guess what? Mm. If you run your own business, I mean, if you get tired and you have something to do and you don't do it, it's your business, yeah. right? But at the same time, you can't take a break when you want. True. Isn't it? True, very But if true. you work for someone, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You can't take leave. If, if they approve it. <laughs> if, again, again, I must say. <laughs> that, that, that clause is very necessary. I know. Because, so let me give an example of an organization that I know. Right. It, it's a government established organization. It's, okay. not a, it's not individually owned. So you're entitled to, every month, as a matter of fact, you can take two days off work. 
Oh, okay. Apart from your normal annual leave, right? And even when you don't take your, if you don't complete your annual leave, they pay you for the days you have left. So, for example, you're supposed to take 21 days and you take only 10 days. Of course, HR, don't look at me like that. HR would push <laughs> for you to take your 21 days. But guess what? If you don't take your 21 days, and I think that's what we know when we say lucrative. Because I believe we're not talking... That's very lucrative. That's, that's very lucrative. <laughs> guess what? Yeah. If they, are, they, are, they, they run something called rave awards or sports mm. bonuses as well. So what that means is everybody in the office nominates someone or two people or three people. You just write out the person's name, what the person has done exceptionally that month, and go put it. Nobody needs to know. Go and put oh. it in the box. At the end of the month, the line manager picks up the box, looks at the names in the box, and you get about £100 every time wow. that you win. And no one is coming to say, oh, I want to do that job over and over <laughs> again. I don't, want, I don't want to go and run my own business. But... The flip side to it is, anytime I think about it, my passion matters to me. And for me, that I consider myself a very multidimensional human being, and an idea generator, my head is always popping every other time, I always want to do something else, right? Mm -hmm. So in as much as there is the, in quotes, career path that is probably pain or, you know, something like that, I also want to do my own thing. I also want to be able to say, oh, this is... Yeah. what Chinelo did, or this is what this person did, right? But then, in this country, like Mary said, not everybody is cut out for that sure. whole side. Sure. And as a matter of fact, how many people have access to these lucrative careers as a matter of fact? Because that's another thing. Most of the jobs out there are mostly individually owned, where the people are not even paying their, the, their, their staff as much, the benefits are not there. Very They're little. not getting the HMO, like you said. Yeah. They're not getting pension. Some mm. people even struggle to even pay tax for their... They, do, do, they struggle to take that money out. Yeah. They take the money out of the salary. They, because don't, they, don't, re, they don't do their tax returns. They don't file their tax returns. So it's, 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 I think that our, our environment constrains us to, you know, pick or choose whatever it is that we would i'm sure if you leave nj to it and will probably do her own thing because <laughs> i mean from people people's personalities some, some people are just cut out but because okay it's just safer for me to work mm. for this company and then you are there pouring out all of yourself mm. into somebody's business and at the end of the day you work you work there five years six years seven years you want to move on to something better yeah. like you rightly said there's no career growth. You get to a point and you're just like, your boss. what else? Mm. What is left? Okay, where do we go from here? You're not, I'm not going to earn more than my boss. This mm -hmm. is what I'm going to be stuck with. So what do I do next? What? So I think that these are also things that, that, that we might also want to you know, consider. But I'm going to ask another question, but I think we should take a break. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll also open our phone lines. See you in a bit. If you're just tuned in to our Ladies' Night Out and we're discussing the topic, pursuing a lucrative career path versus entrepreneurial ventures. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818 
Also, our phone lines are now open, and you can call us on 0702500774. And I would actually love to hear what your perspective is on running a lucrative career or an entrepreneurial venture. So, before we went on a break, I was saying um, that I mean, sometimes you have to also consider work life balance or your lifestyle choices. This is that also determinants as to know if you actually want to continue on that lucrative career path or if you want to choose an entrepreneurial um, venture. But then, NJ, let me ask you now. Um, what do, do you think that passion particularly plays any role in these choices? And if you do, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Mm, I think passion is very, very important because passion is a driver, is a motivator. So... Um, at some point in time, passion is what drives you when you're going down. You know, every, it's like a... A slope. Yeah, so it goes up and down. Mm -hmm. So when it's going down, is your passion and your, you know, what you have... Goes back to your part. Let me just, yeah, mm -hmm. what's, that's what's motivating what's you me, and yeah. that what's driving you and that is what keeps you going. So yes, pa I feel like passion is very, very important and it plays a major role when it comes to making the decision if you should go for, mm. you know, a lucrative career or go in, become an entrepreneur and look into the business line. I think it's quite important. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Let me yeah. just mention. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned that um, some people prefer to be, to be business owners, entrepreneurs, but they probably cannot afford, you know, to do that full time. I would say they can use their nine to five to fuel their passion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also just test it, test the waters and say, okay, can I, as I'm with this, my nine to five, let me see. So in case, you know, sometimes your passion can just be passion without <laughs> it's not going giving to you the life you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you can use it to test the waters and know, okay, is this what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Just to add. Yeah. Absolutely. That's very important because... I think there's this there's this guy on Instagram that does these videos for his get ready to work. Mm -hmm. And in one of the episodes, like he's so good at it. He, you know, all the corporate um, terms or, you know, when you're in office lounging, he gets everything, you know, and his Instagram like has so many followers. And one of the posts he said, because um, obviously people be like, oh, why don't you just quit and, you know, do, do this it. thing. Yeah. And he said, I actually like the corporate world. Mm. And besides, if I quit, <laughs> this is the content. You work, <laughs> you do <the> content. <laughs> so, so work on that. Actually, you work is the content. Yeah, you just yeah. So, yeah. what content are I going to give you? <laughs> if, if I'm actually, not working. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So, true, I think. True. <laughs> okay, let's There's talk about um, societal expectations and perceptions. Mm. <laughs> because it's that. <laughs> right? Most times, People like that she e o, <laughs> you know. She e o. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, okay. You know, she looks. She's a boss. Do you, do you understand? She's a boss lady. It's and see, that's one problem that we actually have in Nigeria right now because there are too many. There are too many CEOs. See, see you. She a lot of she 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 look. Look. <laughs> There are a lot of she e o's right now. There are some that I see and I'm like, excuse me. Oh yeah. What exactly? Do you do? What is your work? And you see these people at like, conferences, see, see them at seminars, yeah. see them at. And they are coming, they are wearing one. Okay. No shade to me. No, no, no shade. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, so let's, let's look at that. What are your thoughts? Mary, let me, let me start with you. What are your thoughts on societal um, perception? Um, to be honest, yeah, I think how it's, it's an individual thing. Like mm -hmm. how you carry yourself is how you'll be addressed. Um, obviously, I think there's a maybe social media era, and because it's an entrepreneurial era, mm -hmm. every you know body wants to show that you know under five I years, I, yeah. you know, I own a business. You know, it's a thing of pride. It is actually a thing of pride. But I would say everybody is CEO in their own little corner. Mm, absolutely. Do you understand? Yeah. When you get home to your Yes, man, no, you are madam. Nobody <laughs> knows what you're doing. And there have been times when, like, personally, in the office, I would dress up because I actually like suits and I actually like to look like <laughs> I'm not there, but I like to look like it. And sometimes people come into the store and say, oh, 
like so like is this your place <laughs> <laughs> you know like oh you, so that's you, why you, you know, know. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, my yeah. Do you <laughs> so you know um i i think i think it's yeah. it's it's a good mindset I, I mean however it shouldn't be um bastardized like you know just any little thing but it's a very good mindset if you show up to where you are now like you are the ceo mm. eventually mm. you will arrive there mm. you know mm. so I'm, i i wouldn't um i wouldn't blame some people who do that another example i'll give is motivational talks and everything when i see when i hear some people give speech that i know that even they themselves cannot do especially all these sales people and you know and I, it, it irritates me but at the same time i pinch myself to say you think what this person is saying is stupid because it doesn't resonate with you and you have better ways that has at least worked for you you know that you want to be a motivational speaker but then because it sounds so cliche and every other person is doing mm -hmm. it so you're just like oh yeah i don't want to be part of the bandwagon auntie you self start your own now start your own talk and talk to people and before you know it you are actually the ceo that you want mm. so i don't think it's a bad um perception or perspective per se you know i mean sometimes it gets a bit rampant because we know that truly and truly is not your business that is funding your lifestyle mm -hmm. but hey who are we to George. Is George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have any contrary thoughts? Well, I wouldn't say contrary, but yes, like she said, there's, let me use the word, there's a craze for, you know, oh, I want to be a business owner. And you know this thing that they say, no nine to five person has become a billionaire or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is what yeah. is making a lot of people just want to jump at anything. Mm -hmm. They've not done their market research. They've not seen yeah. whether this business is profitable. Everybody just wants to be CEO, posh. What are the name they is Posh lady. Please, I'm sorry if you are listening your business name is Posh lady. <laughs> but yes, so there is that craze to want to just jump on it. Oh, I'm a business owner, CEO. I mean, you shouldn't be... Don't let people pressure you. If your 9 to 5 is giving you the satisfaction you want, if you can invest, like um, NJ said, investment is a form of side hustle. Mm -hmm. So if it's that you want to do to sustain yourself, I mean, by all means, do it. Mm, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's this comment that we got from Facebook, and um, this is actually stemming to what I was just going to ask NG next. It says, I'll prefer to run a business. By so doing, you go to the extent of creating room for job opportunities, and at the same time, you don't have to wait to be paid. Mm. You're the CEO of yourself, and you get yourself paid. My brother, it sounds very easy. But, you know, in most times, or rather, in most cases, when you start off a business, it's widely said that you don't make money it's in almost like the first, first year. year of business, you have to right? go through it. Because you have a whole lot of, you know, bills to pay, running costs, and especially if, depending on the industry that you're, you're working in, and especially, right? But I was going to say something about job creation. I mean, we understand that um, the more... Um, privately owned businesses that we have or the more let's say SMEs or, uh, or entrepreneurs that we have the more job creation it is especially yeah. for an economy like ours yes. NJ what are your thoughts on that um well like you said it's very it's what is happening that's where we find ourselves now and the thing is that there's there are a lot of younger people who are, have become CEOs and to an extent, I think it will go in the future to go a long way in helping the economy mm -hmm. yeah. but that is only if they take it seriously. Yeah. And by taking it seriously, it's not just, you know, going to CAC to get a business name and all uh, that. And NJ, having... Thank you for mentioning <laughs> that. <laughs> See, some of them don't even have CAC documents. What? But no. they run, they've been running businesses. Some of them don't pay tax. tax. So at the end of the day, it's detrimental to the economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But if you're able to follow the guidelines of running a normal business or running a, the kind of business you want to run, which is a well-established business, you'll go through the guidelines of registering the company yeah. trying to establish some level of structure employment for you know there's uh, you help in job creation through employment whether it be permanent employment or contract based on mm -hmm. contract and all that so you have the opportunity to do that so it opens up a lot for everyone because um you know it has the, the where we're going to there's a lot of new routes um, technology just came in how many years ago and see how fast it's booming. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are making so much money and initially it used to be just you maybe just doing 
um, either forex trading or something online. But now people have schools, academies. They even have institutions where they train and everything. And re So that in itself is job creation because you are providing jobs for the teachers, the people, the lecturers or the right. tutors. You are providing jobs for a whole lot of other people, especially if you have a ground presence. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So, yes, there's a lot of job creation in that. And I think it's very, very important for us to look into more into establishing companies that would outlive us. Mm, I right. think that's another uh, issue that we have yes. in Nigeria. Sustainability. So we, yeah, yeah, very we establish companies, you know, is a is almost like, let me go back to my people, Emeka and Sons Limited. <laughs> but the thing, the difference between Emeka and Sons Limited and what we currently have now is that Emeka and Sons Limited is actually doing it for his sons. That's the plan. The plan is to pass it on to the next generation and to keep the business rolling. But the kind of businesses we establish now and in today's world is like me, myself and I, me, just, you know, one, two, yeah, three people. people. So no, eventually if something happens, there's no, there's no continu business continuity. Mm. So there's nobody that knows about your business because you, you can't even travel. Most people who own businesses can't even leave. A lot of them can't even leave their businesses in trusted hands yeah. to travel. Mm. So when you say freedom, the, the freedom is limited, actually, mm. because at the end of the day, you're stuck doing your business. I remember there was a period of time I wasn't working and I went back to my business, which is um, an events management company. And I realized that I was working almost around the clock mm -hmm. because during the day, most of the organizations that you want to meet for meetings are yes. meeting other business people because your own is entertainment. Mm. So yeah. it's a bit <laughs> social. So most of the meetings were after hours. So you see yourself during the day, you're working on paperwork and everything and running around, going to the bank, doing all sorts of yeah. things, going to venues and going to go and seek for maybe pricing or something. And at, at night, you are in meetings still really late. So at the end of the day, on like a nine to five where you just go to work in the morning mm -hmm. and, you know, at five o'clock, you start well, looking at your boss. Now you like carry the work leave. home. Are you continue? But I get what you're saying. I'm but yeah, saying. there's a lot more. <laughs> yeah. The system is opening up now for a lot more work-life balance, and yeah. a lot of, of uh, organizations and businesses are taking that into That's cognizance. Good. So yeah. it's a good, it's a good way, in my opinion. But yeah, it's. It has all these things, has its, it has its downsides. I, I like that you touched on long-term sustainability, right? Because the truth is, a whole lot of people start off this entrepreneurial journey without actually putting down their plans into proper consideration. Right. So you see someone who gets up and leaves their job and says they're going to start their own thing. And then in two years, three years, they're no longer anywhere to be found <laughs> because before they got up, they did not plan. Yeah. Because the thing is, running your own business is quite hectic. Yeah. It's, it would tell on you financially, it would tell on your mental health, it would tell on your... You see this work-life balance that we are talking about as we are saying, oh, you have the freedom to do your own thing. Like NJ said, you will not. Because you are then, do, if you fail, you fail for your pocket too. You know, if you are working for a 9 to 5 and you fail, they will still pay your salary. Yeah, but after you will yeah, something from it. But you will still get some money at the end of the day. But if you fail in your business, guy, there's no money for you that money. You're going to be broke. You're back to square one. Yeah. So it's, I think this is another, that's actually one advice that people should actually pick up. If you... I mean, we're not all called to work in 9 to 5. Some people are called to do their own things because how then are we going to, like we've rightly said, how are yeah. we going to create more job opportunities? How are we going to boost the economy and all of that? But before you do that, you need to... Act. And another thing, they go to... They now employ other people's children and they make these people suffer for their own mistakes. Because then you've employed people and, you know, they are going through a whole lot of work stress because you haven't planned out how your company or how your organization or how your business is supposed to run. Yeah. So you literally have one person doing the work of 10 people and then they are so <laughs> worn out. And then, guess Drained. what? When that happens, your productivity level is then zero. So you now go back and you're like, okay, where do we start from? So it's okay to want to do your own thing. It's okay to run your own business. But please, have a proper plan. What's that in the DCC? <laughs> a proper Preparation prevents poor performance. Oh, you, you got it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So as I was saying, long-term sustainability, right? There's a place of the economic uh, um, um, downturn. There's a place of technological advancements. Yes. Because there's that as well. You can't, if you, if, for example, you set it off a, a factory, a man for you into manufacturing, for example, I bet that most organizations, I saw a video on um, Instagram, 
um, today about some guy who makes garments. Um, he runs a clothing factory okay. in Aba, oh. in Nigeria. And he, he's a strong evil guy, by the way. And then he went to China to visit. And he said <laughs> he was very ashamed of this is this guy that owns one of the biggest garment factories in Nigeria. So when he went to China, that he realized that what he's doing in his factory he's is just play, play, oh. Wow. <laughs> and to think that he has the kind of space that he has. Like he mm. thought he was doing a fantastic job. And I guess what? These people have these same machines that he has, but their productivity, their productivity level is way higher because of their technological advancements. Mm. He said he saw that and he was like, ah, no. I have to come back home <laughs> and, and, do do, and do better because I thought I was there, but apparently I am not. So if you're going to run a business, you also need to consider the place of technological advancements. True. as well because that would also help sustainability in the in the business but then i mean having said all of this i mean i think the ladies have even <laughs> said what they would actually prefer everybody has said no mary said no i don't want that financial risk you know i'd rather stay there and get my money get my commission <laughs> but then and, I, I, sorry yeah i i think the the nine to five is not really um glorified enough and mm. maybe because people at the top as well don't also want to show the amount of, you know, is is corporate. I'll take banking for example. You know, um, if you're meeting an MD, you know, they're they're very conservative, but because of the industry I work in, I can tell for a fact that there are quite a couple of successful people who have made their money a large chunk of their money from nine to five. But it's sort of a I can't, they can't really come out and, and you know... Have you seen that, sorry, me. have you seen that post recently? I, I don't know who, which CEO said that thing or who said it and said, bankers are not meant to be billionaires. Oh, have you seen that, yeah. that post? I think I said seen it yesterday. Yeah. So I think that explains, and, yes. And they're the... They're, I think that explains... <laughs> they're the, the they're biggest... Your money Thank now. you. That's because <laughs> of all of the undergy roles no, that they're doing. Aside from the undergy things, if you, I feel like, if you grow through the ranks, I mean, look at oil companies. You can't tell me that you've worked, you know, in, in an oil, as a professional in an oil company for about 10 years or 15 years. Come on, you would have amassed a good, That's a like, curve. yes. So, I mean, what we should say is let's have better quality jobs. Do you understand? That would make people, because every not everybody can be a CEO. True. Do sure. you understand? Can be and everybody behind the scene mm. is needed. True. Everybody True. for the production of this show, you need the people who are not they don't seen. care about the yeah. being seen, mm -hmm. but they're the brain work. Mm -hmm. You know, so definitely you can grow through those ranks. Absolutely. You don't have to be out there. It's very we should focus on the quality of jobs. It would is way better. I think the yeah. truth is well what I would say is that whether you're in 9 to 5, wherever you find yourself, let your money work for you. Mm. Like she said, people who have worked in industries like this, you can't tell me that they don't have like good money. Mm, of course. is based on you know, the investments they made, you know, delayed gratification and yeah, all of that. Promotions so promotions will come. Yes. You know, you'll be giving some certain benefits to high Absolutely. Well. I agree True. with you 100, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> NJ, any final words? Um, well... I think we've said a lot and um, just like we continue to say, it's very, very, both are very, very important depending on how, which, uh, what choice you decide to make. But there are things that you have to table before you make that decision. Yeah. There's the financial part. There, there are lots of things. How much freedom you actually want. Do you really have a plan for, mm. or for your entrepreneurial life? Or do you want to pick up a job and have a nine to five and then think about an entrepreneurial life? So it depends. There's a lot that we can take out of today's conversation. And I think everyone would benefit either way. I think that there are two things we did not touch on, which I'm just going to start on very quickly. We didn't speak about government policies and regulations and how that can actually Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Business owners. Business owners. True. Because someone was saying, I don't know who, I think it was a guest we had on the show, I was saying that, oh, yes, I remember it was Dr. Johnson. And he said, oh, how you'd have 
five people from Lagos State come to your office. Dude. One will tell you radio, radio and TV radio license. Time. One will tell you one thing, one thing. One will tell you, and you're just like, bro, what's, oh, yeah. what's, what's <laughs> going on? Time. What's going on that's here? A, and I, I know, right? And there's also, the, as with everything, actually, there's always, there's always a con. There are always cons to mm -hmm. it. But then there's also the place of resilience. There's the place of personal resilience and well-being. Thank God Mary is here, the mental health queen. <laughs> there's that, there is this, we cannot take that away because strategies like work-life balance, stress management, prioritizing mm -hmm. your mental health is actually very, very important. And you cannot rule that out. And trust me, if you're not a strong person, your leg will shake. Mm. And it's not easy to be a business owner in Nigeria. <laughs> not even in a country like ours. Okay, we have a, a comment here. I was just asking to Dale, saying I've not heard anything from Daniel in a while. And here Daniel is. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. What are you saying? Hashtag ways. Pursuing a lucrative career versus entrepreneurial ventures. My dear beautiful sister, Mwa Jaga, he had to say that. <laughs> Made mention of owning a business, employing people and getting income from the business. But on the other hand, the income... Coming has to be monitored for business growth. Absolutely, yes. Has to be monitored for business growth. There are people who combine pursuing lucrative business with entrepreneurial ventures. My dear beautiful sister Chinelo made mention of the hardship in opening a business because it is not easy doing so. She also said that people employ people's children and the business ends up dying. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not good for business owners. You ladies look good and beautiful. Thank ah, you so thank much, you. Daniel. My dear was such you know, nice to have you back. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's always a pleasure reading from you all the time. We love to hear from you. Thank you very much. So, after all being said, it's a case of choose wisely. Are you ready to take the risk? Uh, like Mary said, there is risk everywhere. In your nine to five, there's job security risk because you can have one manager tomorrow hmm. that will wake up <laughs> and say, I don't, like I don't think that she's even doing what she's yeah. supposed to be doing. And before you know what's happening, chaos everywhere. That's right. Yeah. You can also run your own business and things will not particularly go well. The government can frustrate you. You might not be resilient enough. Market trends can even affect mm -hmm. you. So in any um, venture that you decide to, whether you decide to do a lucrative career path, for people that don't have a lucrative career path, and I put lucrative in quotes, because in our Nigeria of today, lucrative is quite relative, considering, yep. considering what, is going, what is going on in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. But in all, make sure that you make the right choices. But before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements and remember to like share comment and invite your friends or family to watch us and follow us if you missed today's quote here it is again you can't be successful in business without taking risk it's really that simple and that's by adena friedman see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen